So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, working on this, uh, this uh, putting this crank into a, a block. I put a photo up of this a little earlier, but I was thinking about it. And in the last 12 months or so, I've had two of these front main bearing carriers come to me, uh, inserted uh, by an engineering shop, and they they very obviously didn't really understand how the oiling system on an airhead works, and so they left a few bits out of it. Um, now. Um, I just thought I, it, I don't really expect that too many people will do this sort of job at home, but I just thought I'd show you a couple of things quickly that may be of interest. So I've pressed this main bearing carrier, main bearing into the carrier now using a special set of tools that are over there on my uh, on my press, and uh, we've had the crank measured and polished. This is a second hand crank I got, and it's in really really nice condition. It's almost new spec. Um, and so the bearings come in different colours denoting how far undersized they are. Red and blue is the main two. Red is the usual one. Uh, these aren't usually subject to a great deal of wear because the oil flow through this BMW airhead system is so great that they are really, really well lubricated. And unless they pick up some crap and mar the bearing or, or run out of oil like this one did, um, there is not a lot that will wear out those main bearings. They go for a long time. If you keep fresh oil and do the right thing and that um, is why people from other countries who who you know when they pull a bike out of a shed they just put some fuel in it and start it right up that's why I just shudder because um, all the crap that's in the oil that's been parked in the bike for a long time settles out goes down to the bottom of the sump you start it up and the oil pickup just sucks it straight up and throws it through the engine and you know the filter might or might not be all right after 10 years standing in a shed, but I wouldn't want to chance it. Anyway, so why are these marks on here? Well, the bearing is actually split like a jigsaw puzzle. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in there. Probably not. You can see the line just to the to the left of that mark. It, it fits together like a jigsaw. And it's put at that angle of degrees. That comes out of the, the, the good book. The Holy Bible of the BMW workshop manual it gives you the measurements and the things you should do and I just mark them up heat this up to about 100 and 120 degrees and I've got a special jig for pressing those in um, in the back of this this is oil distribution center I've often said that in movies and and I, I guess people always sort of wonder what I'm talking about but there there and up the top here there's, you can see through the main bearing there, there's a ring, and if you look in the main bearing, you can see that there's a whole lot of slots in there. The oil comes out of the filter straight up into the bottom of this um, main bearing carrier through that quite large hole at quite large pressure. And it goes around the whole setup here in a, in a, a trough that's in, built into this flies out through these slots in the bearings to, to make, basically make the crankshaft float on oil goes up in through another hole in here and this is the oil pressure relief valve so it has a it has a bypass in it it runs oil out of it all the time when the engine's running down um, onto the timing chain and it falls out through the bottom two holes at the bottom of the block underneath the timing chain so the timing chain uh, itself the guides the tensioners um, and the sprockets are all getting oiled continuously while the engine's running. Similarly, there's a tiny hole in the back of the oil pump housing, um, which is, is on the pressure side of the pump um, rotor, and it squirts a little minute stream of oil straight along the crankshaft, uh, camshaft while the engine is running also. And a tremendous amount of, of oil for a 2.12 or 3 litre sump goes around the engine all the time it's just astounding how much oil this thing can circulate um, so it tells you where to put the bearings in I mark them up heat it up just press them down it's a straightforward simple enough thing to do that that's the little jig that I use for there these are my main bearing tools here for pushing in and pushing out in blocks I think I've showed them before and this is the crankshaft which has been measured and polished I sent it down and had it checked I've got uh, some fairly accurate stuff but I like to get them looked at professionally um, and it's not very far at all off a new car new bike spec so it's really good we're really happy with that 
Now what I wanted to show you is when you push the main bearing in, when you get the main bearing, it comes in a little packet like this. And it's, it's got the holes. The later ones have got these slots in them, which are great. And there at the back, you can see the channel where the oil runs. And right there where I happen to turn it up is the jigsaw puzzle joint. Um, and that's how they are. They're quite hard steel shells. And they're quite soft inside. They're very easy to mark when you're putting in. If you're not careful, you will scratch up the surface and cause yourself some grief. So what else did I want to show you? Well, once you put them in, if you look up in there, you'll see in the front part of the bearing there and there, uh, trying to get the light on it, there are two little holes. Now, what they do is they line up with this transfer port here on the crankshaft. And um, it's a really tricky little thing. That inside edge of that runs um, in that groove there where the oil is pouring out of those slots at a great rate of knots. So the inside edge runs in there. There's oil cascading all around the, the crank journal, filling that little port up. And each time that port goes past, the outside end wipes past these two holes. That one and that one there, which are kind of like here and here. And guess what? They line up with a gallery that's bored out of the uh, block up see there are the out outlets of the two holes there one there and one there and they go up through a gallery in the block and they go into the line that runs along the top of each cylinder and fill that up uh, with oil which then comes down your top cylinder studs all four of them uh, two on each side and fills up the rocker gear and causes that not to wear either because it's such a high flow now to tell you how good the pump is in these things, if you take the spark plugs out, take the rocker covers off, earth the spark plugs and wind it over on the starter motor, just from those two little holes, which don't take oil out of the centre part at all, they're in a blind part uh, of the bearing holder and they're drilled through to those holes I showed you on the outside, that transfer port puts enough oil out on the starter motor to run four straight, steady, unbroken streams of oil out of the bottom of your rockers. Now, I find that just amazing. That, that little port spinning around, wiping past those two holes once each revolution, puts enough oil into the galleries along the top of your cylinders to force down through the needle roller rockers, down through the bottom of the rocker gear and flow a steady stream of oil out of the bottom of the rocker that is pretty amazing and that's why i get so upset when people use silicon on things because it's so easy when you're putting silicon goop on the bottom of cylinders and pushing it home and fiddling around with it to block up the tolls on the top of that of that um, setup and if it gets silicon from the push rod rubbers manages to get up into the engine it'll block those little galleries and just destroy the rocker gear. Silicon is the greatest enemy, in my view, of any airhead motorcycle at all. It just should be banned from going anywhere near them. As far as, as again, it's my opinion, and there's bound to be a million people arc up and say, oh, I use it in a smear and do all that. I just don't think it should be allowed near the bloody things, and that's all there is to it. The very last thing I'm going to show you is there's a hole in the bottom here, there, on the other side, it's a bit hard to get in focus. And that's where the infamous roll pin goes through from the back. This has got, I had to open it up, it was all marred. The pin is knocked out. I've got the pin there. We'll tap that back down until it engages. That, that hole is just slightly smaller than the pin. And we just tap it down until it just engages with the back of that hole. Uh, where I've lost it now, wherever it went. There it is. And uh, then pin it over so that it can't get out. We also put a little bit of, of uh, green Loctite on there to make sure it doesn't get out because that can allow this bearing to spin and uh, cause all kinds of grief. It's not as bad as it used to be with the old bearings um, because the old bearings were just two holes drilled in them, one at the bottom and one at the top and, uh, and, and a groove and if it moved, it would just shut off the oil. I've got a photograph at home in my laptop of what happened there. I'll put it up tonight when I go home. But then once you drill those, you must drill those, those holes. Those three holes have to be drilled when you put the bearing in. 
and then you want to make sure that there's no swarf or anything in there really clean it thoroughly and I just use this in my fingers it's just a little countersink just to deburr the the edges of the holes so that there's nothing sticking up into where the bearing runs not necessarily a job for the faint-hearted you do kind of need a press you could probably tap it in I suppose but I certainly wouldn't recommend it it's a fairly uh, it, it needs to be put in very carefully these front and rear bearings and when you're putting it in the block you need to support the back of the block on a special part of the bearing insertion tool which is there and this part here goes up this bit goes up and engages and holds in the back of the block so that it's got the strength to take the pressing of the bearing without distorting um, I really do think that if you re need to replace mains in your and in your bikes unless you're really competent with a, a well-equipped home workshop you should just take it somewhere and get it done but be aware to tell whoever does it about drilling those holes hey so there you go that's uh, another afternoon in lockdown in the boxer works fort boxer works we call it stay well i hope you're all surviving the coronavirus and i hope you're all happy and enjoying life because we're lucky to have it i guess see you again next time around